what's going on guys welcome back thank you so much for clicking on the video today i'm going to be showing you an s tier magic carry and knight build that's been carrying me through my entire playthrough man it feels good to be this powerful it's been so much fun just killing everything quick shout out to our sponsor aoe.com if you don't want to grind for items or runes and you want items real quick use my code cold for three percent off i just wanted to take a quick second and give you guys a shout out for helping me reach 60,000 subscribers on the channel support has been amazing and i really just want to say thank you what i really like about this build is the fact that you can use it in a variety of ways you can cast spells and destroy your targets from range even use magic carrion spell abilities or close quarters combat all of this while wielding the carrion glintstone staff boosting our carrion sword sorceries we also can't forget the jellyfish shield boosting both our melee and magic damage and trust me it's a pretty big boost this build is extremely powerful for endgame it's going to make the game way easier for you and it will destroy anything that gets in your way making this one of the best magic knight builds in elven If you are somewhere around level 50, well then your attributes could look something like this. Keep in mind, I chose the warrior class when I started Elden Ring. For Vigor, we have 20, Mind 15, Endurance at 12. We increased our strength so we could take advantage of the Jellyfish Shield, which is going to increase our magic damage and physical melee damage as well. We have 18 Dexterity, 30 Intelligence. Intelligence is going to be our primary attribute on this build. Faith at 8 and Arcane at 9. If you are somewhere around level 100, well then your attributes would look something like this. For Vigor, we have 40. Obviously, HP is going to be extremely important in a game like this. For Mind, we have 20. Endurance, 20. We want to increase our endurance over time because our equipment load is going to increase as well. And we want to make sure we have the best in slot items on our build. For strength, 20. Dexterity, 20. I highly recommend increasing your dexterity over time as well because it does increase your spell casting speed. Intelligence, 45. Faith at 8. And Arcane at 9. Around level 150, which is typically where most people like to stop leveling up their character, your attributes would look something like this. For Vigor, we have 50. You can increase it to 60 if you feel the need to do so, but just keep in mind, most of the time, the enemies that you fight are not even gonna have the chance to attack you. For Mind, we increased our Mind to 30. Endurance, 30. Like I said, your equipment load is going to become important as you unlock these high level best in slot items that we're gonna go over today. We have Strength at 20, Dexterity at 30, Intelligence 60, Faith at eight, and Arcane at nine. At level 200, your Vigor could be around 50, anywhere between 50 and 60. It's completely up to you. For Mind, we increased our Mind to 40, Endurance 35, Strength 20, Dexterity 45, which I believe is the cap for spell casting speed intelligence at 70 our highest attribute on the build we want to make sure our intelligence is as high as possible we have faith at eight and arcane at nine i am currently level 250 these are my attributes that you're looking at here for vigor i have 60 mind 51 endurance 36 strength at 20 dexterity 65 intelligence at 80 faith at eight and arcane at nine what's great about this build overall you do lots of damage with your magic but you also do tons of damage with your melee weapon my melee weapon of choice is the scavenger's cold curved sword plus 25 fully maxed out just make sure when you decide which ash of war you want to use i highly recommend using the cold affinity this is going to give you 105 frost buildup and we also have that additional 38 blood loss buildup that comes with the scavenger sword. I know a lot of you intelligence players out there love the Moonvale Katana. Now this is a great option for this build, easily one of the best weapons in the game. I would honestly say probably top three weapons in Elden Ring. Transient Moonlight does so much damage, it's extremely reliable, and the Moonvale Katana is just such a good weapon overall. I know a lot of people also enjoy using the Wing of Astol. I know just from the comments alone from my previous videos, a lot of people like this weapon. 
the nebula ash of war that's exclusive to this weapon actually does a lot of damage and this is an extremely underrated weapon now obviously in order to cast spells we have to use a glintstone staff we're actually using the carrion glintstone staff plus 25 fully maxed out and the main reason you want to use this one is because this glintstone staff in particular will actually boost your carrion sword sorceries fully maxed out the attribute scaling will be s tier for intelligence which is incredible our sorcery scaling is going to be very high and this is easily one of the best options to use the spells that this is going to increase the ones we're using on this build in particular for example is the carrion piercer that you see here an incredible spell we actually have a doula's moonblade on here as well one of the best carrion sword spells and then the carrion slicer which is really good for just fast up close melee damage the next item that we are looking at probably one of the most important items on this build is the jellyfish shield this jellyfish shield has an ash of war called contagious fury now this is going to last for 30 seconds and it's going to increase our damage by 20 percent and yes that counts for both melee damage and magic damage this shield pairs very well with magic builds because as soon as we activate contagious fury we are going to do more damage with our spells and if we need to we can switch to our melee weapon and eliminate our target for the apparel i really obviously wanted to make a magic knight so i felt the carrion knight armor was the best choice we have the carrion knight helm the carrion knight armor i actually have millennia's gauntlets i think the prosthetic arm looks really cool with this outfit and then last but not least here, we have the Carrion Knight Greaves. Now, in order to be effective with this build, you have to make sure you have the right talismans. The first talisman I'm using is the Ritual Sword Talisman. This is going to raise attack power when HP is at maximum. Like I mentioned earlier, you guys, most of the time, if you are playing this build correctly, you are not going to be attacked which means your spells and your melee attacks are going to do more damage as long as you stay at max HP. We are also using the green turtle talisman, which is going to raise our stamina recovery speed. I think stamina recovery speed is extremely important because when you cast spells, when you dodge, whatever it may be, it's going to use your endurance and you wanna make sure you can get it back as soon as possible. We are also using Godfrey's Icon Talisman, which is going to enhance charge spells and skills. Our main range spells, which is the Comet and the Comet Azor, is going to benefit heavily from this. For the last Talisman, I'm using the Graven School Talisman, which is going to raise the potency of sorceries, which means our magic is going to do more damage. You could also use Merica's Source Seal as an alternative. This is going to greatly raise your attributes. It's going to increase your mind, intelligence, faith, and arcane overall. The more intelligence you have, obviously, the more damage you are going to do. The next thing I want to show you guys is the spells that I'm using on this build. And obviously, being an intelligence build, this is extremely important, right? The first spell that I'm using is actually called Terra Magica. This is going to create a spherical zone around your character. And as long as you're standing inside of it, this is going to increase your magic damage by 35%. Also, don't forget that you can stack even more damage using the Jellyfish Shield Contagious Fury Ash of War, giving you an additional 55% magic damage on your build. The next spell is the Comet, which is going to be your main spell. What I like most about the Comet is you can charge it, and the longer you charge it, the more range it's going to do, but not only that, it's also going to do more damage. We also have the Carrion Phalanx, which is a pretty good defense spell, and it's going to attack your targets if they get too close. Obviously, using the Carrion Glintstone Staff on this build, we are going to take full advantage of the Carrion Sword Sorceries. The first one being the Carrion Slicer, which is really good. It doesn't use much FP at all. It's really good for stagger, and it does a decent amount of damage. The best part about it, the attacks are really fast. The next one, the Carrion Piercer, which is actually one of my personal favorite. This is extremely effective against tough enemies. It causes a lot of stagger, and it's going to knock down most of the enemies that you run into. I also highly recommend using Adula's Moonblade. 
Not only does it do a pretty decent amount of damage, but it does frost damage and also obviously causes frost buildup, which is extremely effective against most of the enemies in the game. The last spell on this build, which is actually the best and hardest hitting spell on this build, the Comet Azor. Now, if timed correctly, you would place Terra Magica on the ground, you would use Contagious Fury from the Jellyfish Shield, buffing our magic damage by 55%, we would drink our Wondrous Physic, which contains the Cerulean Hidden Tear, eliminating FP consumption for 10 seconds. This is going to be extremely effective against bosses. It's going to do tons and tons of damage, and it's easily one of your strongest spells. Like I mentioned, for our Wondrous Physic mix, we are taking advantage of the Cerulean Hidden Tear, which eliminates all FP consumption for 10 seconds. And then we also have the Intelligence Not Crystal Tier, temporarily boosting our overall intelligence. That is the Magic Carry and Knight build. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video in any way, shape, or form, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. It seriously helps the channel grow. Also, if you want to see more Elden Ring videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.